So building a PC isn't actually very hard. Uh, all you have to do is plug the pieces together once you've got them. The trick is getting the right pieces right the first time. Now, the fundamental decision you have to make is your choice of processor. Are you going to go for an AMD processor or an Intel processor? Now, as you can see, I have an AMD processor here. This is an AMD Phenom, and it's got pins. Uh, I have an Intel Core 2 processor here that has pads. That means the two are not compatible in the same motherboard. So you have to make the right choice of processor and the right choice of motherboard. So once you've made your choice of motherboard and processor, you then need to think about your memory. Now uh, there are basically two types of memory on the market these days. Uh, it used to be three. Um, there used to be DDR, um, which is the old type, and then there's DDR2, and there's DDR3. Now, DDR2 is almost certainly the type of RAM you'll want if you're going for an AMD system. On all recent AMD processors, uh, the X2, Athlon X2 series, and uh, the Phenoms all need DDR2 memory. Uh, with an Intel system, it's slightly more difficult because you can have either DDR2 or DDR3 depending on the motherboard. So you need to check beforehand with the motherboard manual or the motherboard manufacturer, which is compatible. Next thing to think about is the graphics card. Uh, pretty straightforward in fact. Um, there used to be a bit of a decision between AGP and PCI Express. Uh, the last year or so AGP graphics cards have pretty much died out and we're left with PCI Express graphics cards. Um, every new motherboard has a PCI Express graphics card slot. You just pop it in the motherboard and you're away. Next decision, hard disk. Now, a word of warning with hard disks, um, they're delicate. They've got moving parts inside, and there's a head flying over the surface of the disk. If you knock it, it hits the disk, uh, the hard disk is dead. Um, always be careful when you're handling hard disks, when you're installing them, don't knock them. When you put it down on the desk, put it down carefully, otherwise you've just got a paperweight. Next is the power supply. Now, these have become more important over the last few years because uh, there's a lot more power consumed by graphics cards and CPUs these days. So you need to make sure your power supply is capable of supplying at least 450 watts, uh, preferably more, but once you get up to the 900 watt range, that's kind of overkill. So make sure 450, 500 watts and you're fine. Next thing, your optical drive. Uh, again, this is pretty straightforward. Um, the only slight complication is at the back, you have um, a parallel ATA connector. Um, some of them have serial ATA SATA connectors, which are narrower, but most optical drives still have this parallel connector. Um, either way, your motherboard is almost certainly going to have a free SATA connector and a free parallel connector, so it's not something you particularly need to worry about. Um, obviously, uh, don't buy an HD DVD one if you're thinking of going high definition, because HD DVD is now pretty much defunct. Go for Blu-ray. One final thing uh, before you start putting bits in the case and you start with installing the motherboard is a quick word of warning about your CPU heatsink. Uh, now this is a standard stock heatsink from, from Intel which goes with a, a Core 2 processor. Um, you can install this straight down onto the motherboard just by popping things in, these little connectors here we'll see later. This uh, rather bigger affair um, may need a plate on the back of the motherboard before you install the motherboard so make sure if you have a, a big hefty heatsink, you look at the manual first and if you need to, you need to install the processor first. We'll look at that shortly. So you've got your bits, you just need to uh, put them in the case. Now um, we've got a, a fairly basic um, ATX case here. ATX is the standard for almost all PC cases. Uh, make sure you don't go for something like a mini ITX or anything like that because the standard motherboard is an ATX motherboard, it fits an ATX case. Um, pretty simple standard case, there's a power supply goes in here, the hard disks go in here, the motherboard will screw in here and the optical drive, the optical disks will pop in the top. So installing the CPU, um, it's pretty straightforward. It goes in the socket 775 there. This is a Core 2 Duo CPU. Um, a word of warning, um, same with all uh, electronic devices. Don't touch the pins if you can possibly avoid it, because uh, it's possible, although unlikely, that a static discharge could actually destroy the device, although it very rarely happens. So to install the CPU, you need to be very careful, because the actual socket itself is pretty delicate. Make sure you uh, align the notches here with a notch in the socket and just gently drop it in like that and make sure it's bedded in and then just pop down the top and clip it in and that's in. Next thing, before we install the heatsink, uh, we need to apply some thermal transfer compound. Um, it's pretty gooey, sticky stuff. Try not to get it on your fingers, although it's not very toxic, it's not very nice. Uh, and then just apply a little bit on the top of the CPU. There's a lot of nonsense talked about how you should apply it terribly carefully and evenly apply it. Basically, we've always found in many PC Pro Labs tests that if you just get a little bit across the top, that's basically going to be okay. So installing the CPU heatsink um, can be a bit nerve-wracking. Um, this is a stock Intel uh, heatsink so we don't need to put anything on the bottom of the motherboard. It's a question of 
getting these little things in the holes and just pushing down on each one in turn, like so. Uh, you do need to apply quite a bit of pressure, but eventually they snap into place, like that. Last thing is just to install the CPU fan power connector. Just find the little connector there and pop it on. So installing the RAM is pretty simple. Um, assuming you've uh, paid attention, you've got the right type of motherboard for the right type of RAM. Um, this is a DDR2 motherboard, so we're installing a DDR2 RAM. Uh, you'll see that there are four DIMM sockets. Now you need to make sure that you put, if you're using two sticks, which um, generally you will be, uh, that you install them in the right banks. Uh, that's because for dual channel operation, uh, each SIM needs to be in a different channel. So one goes in there, one goes in here. They're color coded so you can see. All you need to do is make sure they're aligned properly and in it goes. And the second one, again, aligned properly the right way around. And in it goes. So, uh, with the RAM and the processor in place, it's always best to put those in first. Uh, now, all you need to do is put the motherboard in the case, making sure you've got an ATX motherboard and an ATX case, and you just need to screw them in. One there. So now we've just uh, installed the power supply. That's a simple question of just uh, popping in the screws. We haven't connected it up yet. Before we do that, we're just going to install the graphics card. So we need to remove one of the PCI blanking plates at the back here which is easy enough, pull it out and then pop in the graphics card which just slots into its slot like that. And Now make sure you actually screw the graphics card in with uh, the screw that you just took out with the blanking plate because graphics cards are quite heavy and if you don't screw them in it's liable to come unstuck if you move it. Now that we've done that, we just need to attach the power for the various things on the motherboard. Start with the graphics card. Not all graphics cards need an um, auxiliary power connector, but many do these days. In there. You also need to make sure uh, you've got your auxiliary CPU power connector installed as well. Modern CPUs need a lot of current, so they need a special extra connector to supply the juice like that. And then finally, you just need to install the mother motherboard main power. This is a, a two-part connector. We need to use both of these for this motherboard. Now, when it comes to installing your hard disk, uh, bear in mind there are a couple of different types of power connector. Um, this is um, a SATA hard disk, SATA hard disk, which most hard disks are these days. Um, but it has this type of power connector, which corresponds to one of these power connectors uh, coming from the power supply. Uh, some SATA hard disks actually have two power connectors, one of those and one that accepts a Molex connector, which looks like that. Um, use either or, never use both of them, because um, that will go horribly wrong if you do that. And the actual SATA connector itself, the data goes down, is one of those, which just slots in there, and the power connector from the power supply plugs in there. So now once we've uh, got the hard disk attached to the caddy, this particular case has a caddy, but they do vary slightly. Some, some of them you just screw them straight in. We can just slide the hard disk in like that. Again, being careful that you don't knock it or do anything too drastic. And with the optical drive, um, it's a question of just uh, connecting your ID connector and the power connector. Uh, an ID cable looks like this. Uh, it should be keyed, so you can't put it in the wrong way around. If it happens not to be keyed with the, the tab there, the top tip is to make sure you have the red bleed next to the power cable, because that's almost certainly going to be the right way around. So you just pop it in there. And the power is just one of these Molex connectors, which goes in like that. OK, so now we've got everything pretty much connected to the board. All the components are in place, and the hard disk and the CD-ROM drive are attached. Uh, we just need to do the finishing touches, which is uh, attaching the motherboard connectors, like the power switch here, the uh, hard disk LED. And this case has external USB connectors, so we've attached a USB header here. And we have the SATA connector for the hard disk has been attached here. And the IDE for the CD-ROM drive is here. And we're pretty much ready to go. OK, now we've got everything attached to the motherboard. We've got the graphics card, the RAM, the processor. Everything's all nicely in place. One last thing to remember is if you look at the CPU heatsink here, now this is a stock Intel cooler. It's quite compact. But if you look around it, there are various things that could potentially cause problems if you have a larger heatsink. So what you need to do if you're going for a non-standard cooler, something that's bigger, maybe quieter, is make sure you've got enough clearance around the motherboard before you spend 30, 40 pounds on a posh cooler that doesn't fit.
And finally, when you've checked everything, just put the side back on the case. And power up the mains and attach the graphics card. We can put it all back together, press the power button, and it works.